One, two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, 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 I to the east side. Moving on up. Hello. That was a song by Aretha Franklin. Sure. I think it was. No, it's not Aretha Franklin. Sorry, no offense. I don't know who it is. I just know I like that song a lot. And it's very appropriate for what's happening. And, and again, it's a good song, obviously. But without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Good Times with the Boys. I'm joined here with Kong San, the my 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 ride along, my road dog through through these podcasts. And you might you may see something a little a little not necessarily off putting, but a little different about what's happening if you've been watching you you've you you've been seeing the development of this. Mm-hmm. But Kong San has an unusually high number, large number of boxes at his house right now. Yes. And because, as they say, sometimes all good things must to come to an end. Or all good things can get better. I, I, no, one's, <laughs> no one's ever said that. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no one's ever said that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I heard that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Kong San, what is, what is, what's happening in the, in the Kong San household recently? Uh, we're moving Ooh. by we, I mean me, I don't know why I said we're moving, <laughs> but that also means, you know, headquarters is moving. Correct. Um, ideally and ironically, this is episode number 60. I love ending things, pausing things, things need just fives and fives and tens, multiples of fives and tens mm-hmm. is ideal for me. You know, I am the guy at the gas station that will squeeze every last drop of oil just so i end at a round dollar amount gas so gas oil same fuel (laughs) i drive cars uh (laughs) but i am moving to another part of la um torrent basically the purpose of the move is a i want to save money b i've been in torrent in the south bay my whole life i am practically 30 years old by now and the only time I've been outside living of the South Bay, that will make sense eventually in your brain, <laughs> is college, where I spent uh, time in San Diego, but now I'm obviously not in college anymore. So we'll be moving to another part of town, moving HQ, um, sort of uh, moving in with a with Raf, our esteemed guest, our first guest, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll be kind of doing that. And so this is sort of a send off of the old HQ episode 60, February 10th, 2019. Correct. We're going to have a nice send off episode, uh, kind of sort of bringing it a full circle back where we began boy one and two, and we're ready to, uh, to kick things off or end this with gratitude and to introduce this new chapter with, um, appreciation a lot of learning experience from here. You know, one of the learning experiences is get more furniture. Get uh, the correct type of furniture. Get the correct type of pr- furniture. <laughs> it's okay, you know, to to have that stuff around. <laughs> um, hey, kong do you oppose futons? I do now. <laughs> Damn it. I had a futon <clears throat> all throughout college. Oh. And so when I moved out of my parents, I decided to get a mattress and I never looked back. Yeah. I, well... I love things that are just so versatile. Yeah, and, sure. You know, that could be so many things. Uh, mattress is also <laughs> versatile. That's true. It is it, it is for its intended purposes. But you know what? I, I, too, didn't live all my years here in the South Bay. Yes. It's because the first three years of my life, I lived in the Philippines, and I was born there. And it, it just so ha- it, it sucks because 27 years later from that time that I moved here, I'm still here. But I figure... You know, there are, everything happens for a reason. We are all the masters of our own destiny. Mm -hmm. Things happen chronologically different for others. And because it's, it's the, your move put a lot of things actually in perspective for me. Mm -hmm. 
just when you when you have like minds or people who have minds moving towards a common goal, you know, things can happen fairly quickly. And sometimes it just it happens because that's how it's supposed to happen. You know, it's it's meant it's meant to the cookie was meant to crumble that way. And so that happened pretty quick. And, you know, I was pretty, pretty ecstatic for you guys. Yeah, there was a, a great philosopher by the name of Lou Ducris who said, when I move, you move just like that. And that I did not get that. It's right <laughs> now, dude. What the fuck, bro? I was like, who in the fuck is Lou Ducris? Holy shit. And then I was said that, I was like, hey, you know who said that? Oh. Uh, and so that you may not physically move, but by proxy, if I move, you move. Because now when you want to see me, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Yeah, that's. You have a couch to stay on. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. Plenty of space, ample sunlight. Yeah, uh, food and water on the on the on the executive floor. On the executive floor, you know, um, you know, uh, we're having a new headquarters. I'm excited. Um, any change is always exciting. I'm the type of guy like there are certain people that get the one thing and they just that's it for mm. the rest of their life. That's how they want it. I'm the type of person where every once in a while I have to change things up. Yeah. Whether it's a couple months, a couple days, a couple years, it doesn't matter. Everyone, I will eventually want something new every single time. Mm. It's just how I am. Um, and so that's kind of like with the whole uh, moving things. Like I've been here for over two years and there's no, literally no complaints. It's just a personal thing. Like I just want to move. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice too that, people such as yourselves can are able to do so and because there are there are some people who have for one reason or another have kind of been put against the wall in a corner somewhere yeah because of the choices they may or may not have made or whatever and they now they can't not necessarily move forward but they can't even move for not the sanctity of actually moving physically but just you know their their goals haven't moved or physically they haven't moved yet just because perhaps they may have dug themselves a hole that's a little too deep, but any movement is a good movement. Obviously, yes. you know the hardest the hardest step is always the first one. But it's 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 nice that you can uh, afford yourself not only just monetarily speaking, monetarily speaking, but also mentally speaking, physically speaking. All pun intended, because you know you still have a you're, you're still a cripple right now. Yes, very much but, so. You know, it's it's uh, it it is it it sparks every time I because I, I I like to do the same thing also. Although I'm a I am a creature of habit, you know, I don't like surprises and and I don't like I don't like changing as often. But there are times where, and I can't really do this right now just because you know of of my living situation. But I want to throw this desk away so I because it's old and I want a new desk, or you know I want to rearrange my room or my house uh, just to spark some type of interest. Because I do feel that where whenever I acquire, maybe that's why I buy so many dumb things and I'm an impulse buyer. But when I do make certain changes, it does spark, it, it sparks my, my engine a little bit, mm. you know, and it gets, it gets my engines going and I'm all giddy and, and now I'm more willing to do other things. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a positive slippery slope into good, in, into better things. There you go. Yeah. You know, everybody, uh, everybody will eventually catch a break in their life. If you're lucky enough, you catch more than one. But the idea is to just keep going and just making those little steps because the breaks don't happen the same time for everyone. They don't happen the same way, nor in the same capacity. But it'll happen. You just have to to keep going. I mean, also, you're going to experience a lot of setbacks. Um, it's just life. Yeah, I, I've been kind of mulling over this in, in my head also for the last for the last several months now or for the last few months just because of my stagnant lifestyle stagnancy yeah. is that you know just standing still and and again because i've gotten to that point where man i'm pretty comfortable right now but it's just uh, i i perpetuate a lot of bad behavior by doing so and you know i'm not moving around as much or, or anything like that so it, a la you know kong sans move i've also i think i mentioned this before have been in the thoughts of acquiring land slash 
property right slash real estate somewhere mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, i feel like and you know you, you guys uh, all let's just kind of let me know if this you know if i'm making a bad move because i think i'm basing this off of sound judgment when i say that areas that aren't that don't have or uh that are uh, easily inhabitable because of the conditions and the price and all that stuff you know i don't i don't shy away from that unless it's but fuck San Bernardino or some shit like that, or nothing against San Bernardino. It's just that, you know, it's it's not an ideal place to live. But you know, I've been thinking about Vegas. That that'll be a nice place to have a bunch of houses out there, which is more than affordable, even for someone who, who isn't making a shit ton of money. And so, uh, it it would be it'll be nice. Hopefully, maybe before twenty twenty. Uh, and I think I mentioned this, but in twenty nineteen, at least a, a a positive move forward into acquiring something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we have more recordings in Vegas, obviously, and not having to do it in a room where we forget your laptop or something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that would be ideal. I did see this. Um, I forgot what brand it was, but I did see a soundboard that is it's pretty expensive. It's like $500. Okay. But it's, a, it's an audio recording soundboard that will... Uh, has a USB and an SD card slot, so you can actually record without the use of a computer. Really? It'll uh, it'll download the the files into whatever thumb drive or USB that you have, plug it in there, and it has the little buttons on the side for, like, sound effects. Like, if you want the, welcome to the hoi hoi, and then everyone goes, yay, and then you can, like, put that into one of them. It's pretty dope. What? It, it's XLR, like all this stuff. I forgot the brand. It's it's a very well known brand, audio brand. But okay, um, I just thought that was funny when I saw that like ad for it. And I'm like, that would have been so ideal yeah, for that's Vegas. Clutch. That's so clutch. Um, yeah, sometime in the near future, perhaps we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll 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 pull some money. But yeah, I'm 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 glad it's you know it's obviously it's it's bittersweet. It's nice. Uh, and the, the cool thing about living in such area, such as the South Bay, with your buddies, is literally maybe not a stone's throw away, but within a radius of two to three miles. Yeah, it's really easy. It's really easy, and pretty much everyone that I speak to or talk to on a regular basis is within two to three miles of radius of me. Yeah, you know. Uh, and now that radius has gotten a little bit bigger now. Okay. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta expand your horizons. I'm just sad to see you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's nice having another safe haven somewhere. Yeah, right, uh, especially somewhere close to you. I'm two and a half blocks away from a very popular bar. Two and a half blocks away from a one of my favorite restaurants um, in LA. So it's very possible that next time you see me, uh, I'm either going to be an alcoholic or just really fat or both. Or both. Yeah. That's me right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, damn, German, you must have been living in L.A. this whole time. What happened? Nah. Nah. I'm just doing my own thing. You know, (laughs) self-deprecation at its best, baby. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But nah, man, that's uh, it. Um, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I know. You know, I don't think anywhere will ever be like the ultimate, uh, the ultimate place for for somebody. You, especially now that we're talking about just changes and and self betterment and all that stuff. You'll you'll never if you are if you do if that does ring true to you the self betterment stuff. You should never really be comfortable with with where you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why you know you you know you change a lot and 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 you make. And changes for the better, you know. It's not like you're changing your persona or anything like that. But it's 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 all for self betterment. And I, and I believe if you do want to go that path, you do have to make those type of decisions. Yeah. Um. And again, sometimes you will have to take, you know, a couple steps back in order to take a couple steps forward. Yeah. It's some of the, uh, I I kind of fell into the uh, Marie Kondo tidying up Netflix special. Have yet to watch that, but I heard it series. Though. Um, every, like everybody that's watched it has talked about it at some point. So this is my turn. I'm literally getting rid of like a quarter of my shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's literally been like closed, um, items, objects, random shit around the, the apartment that I haven't touched since I put whatever it is on the shelf and in the drawer or whatever. Yeah. And that part of that reason, it makes it like, it's that old, um, Aziz and sorry joke about like, 
how people can get married so quickly after dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. When they don't even own a sweater for a year and a half and they're like, what the fuck was this? You know? <laughs> which leads me to a, a holiday that's coming soon, which I think is, is the idea is nice, but it's the dumbest holiday of, of all the holidays. I agree. Uh, which is Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And this is why I think it's dumb. One, if you're not in a relationship, you are reminded for a 24-hour period how lonely you are, <laughs> which, <laughs> which like, you get reminded every day. Every it's just, day, it's exactly. Just, it's just like this particular day. You're, it's heightened on this day. Yeah, you're reminded like a little louder. Now, two, if you're in a relationship, there's this like heightened sense of romance for one day that I think you should just have shown or you should have expressed your gratitude and appreciation on a daily basis anyway. Mm -hmm. So to have like this one day where it's like, Hey, let's do something special. This one time out of the month. Wasn't that what like anniversaries are for? Isn't that what like birthdays birthdays or just random get togethers? Yeah. Isn't that what that shit is for? Like why it's, I don't, it's because America wants to get rid of all the fucking flowers they grow, I guess. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's, I think it's a silly holiday to me. It's, I I believe it's not, I think, I think it's a money making machine. 100%. 100%. I think it's, it's similar to, and riddle me this, okay. When did you start hearing about these national fill in the blank days? Like when I was like six, five, six, seven. Hmm. Okay, I, I have a moot point then because uh because I, I I I guess I started paying attention to it maybe a couple of days ago. I'm mean, a couple of days, a couple of years ago. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I was like, Joe, what the fuck are you doing? Did you hear about this thing called Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 like not not those. Okay, not Halloween and Christmas and Thanksgiving, but like Arbor Day. No, not even those. Oh. But like National National Siblings Day. Oh yeah, the, those okay. So National those, Donut Day. Although I do love donuts, probably like when I was like ten, eleven, okay, middle school. I, I mean, I guess they they. But I feel like those also synonymous with Valent- Valentine's Day being just the highest one of the, you know, let's get people moving around buying shit. Is what else can we get away with? Today's National Cup Day. For instance, I think this weekend was National Pizza Day, mm-hmm. which I'm all for because I love pizza. But every day's pizza. But day. every day's pizza. Day. Exactly. You don't need to tell me that today is pizza day. Makes no sense. Well, it's because people are trying to sell out of pizza right now. My boy, people are gonna buy fucking pizza regardless. Yeah, no matter what. I don't need anyone to tell me what day it is. Yeah, for it, right? Um, what, what do you feel about the the campaign for on um, adversely to Valentine's Day, Singles Awareness Day? It's just it's so stupid. Because I, I think it's equally as stupid. Yeah. Why? Why would you point to people? Hey, you're single. I know. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, I, I, I think people like, take what, it with pride. What do, you, what do you think we're gonna like forget like it's a, <laughs> that we're single? Like it's like so silly. Um, yeah, I just obviously it, I think it's just a, a very capitalistic holiday, and it's just there to to get people to spend money. The idea is nice, <laughs> but it's just a stupid thing. Like I just think it was just one of those things where it's like February doesn't have a one day. Well, it has like President's, President's day. day. It's Black History Month. Correct. On a s- tangent, why did you get Black History Month the shortest month? That's just that's. <laughs> I don't even know where that originated from. Okay? That's stupid too. Like, why would you get <laughs> Jesus? Like, come on! Like, that's not. I wonder who developed that. Who made that? You know what I mean? A white person, probably. Pro- probably, probably. He's like, okay, these 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 black people are keep keep uh, uprising. So, yeah, we we'll, get, we'll give them a month. We'll give you a whole month, like, bro. It's twenty eight <laughs> days, and every four years we get a twenty ninth day. And this, the shortest month on every other month is 30. Like, what the fuck? So, In hindsight, that's not a good move. But No, it's a terrible move. It, it, is, it is quite hilarious. But uh, I, it, it sucks that I speak so ill of Valentine's Day. And I'm not being against suck. relationships. Well, it, it's, it sucks for me personally because my, my, my parents' anniversary. Oh, it's on Valentine's <laughs> Day? It's on Valentine's Day. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So I, I think I've tried to ask my dad before. Like, Dad, what the fuck were you thinking? Mm-hmm. You know, Valentine's Day as being... Easy I'll, to remember. That is 100% fact. Yeah. That is true. But, I mean, that leads me to... Because as my as my father grows older, uh, and I'm sure as, as you can probably see with your... Well, I mean, your dad is way more in tune with, with the world probably than, than my dad is. But as the older he gets, the more kind of 
grouchy he is. And I could see where mm-hmm. my short temper comes from and how grouchy I get and all that. But there was a time based off of this that their anniversary is on Valentine's Day that my dad used to be uh, 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 what do you call those people? Like a, a softy, you know, mm. like a lovey dovey, like a, a romantic, a, a romantic. There you go. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. a romantic, right? Yeah. And of course, my, uh, you know, our, our moms are always they're they're moms. They're always gonna be. Oh yeah, I love you. I love, I love my husband, your dad, your father. You know, and obviously, your dad's gonna be like, yeah, you know, she's she's okay. Yeah. But you know, thirty years ago, nah, bro, you were wooing her, saying that. Oh my god, I'm gonna plan for this day because I know it's Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I, I for one will not be doing that. You know, when I ever do get married, it's it's. Uh, I I think I'll have enough mental fortitude to remember the day, so just so I don't have to peg it on a, a day like, God forbid, like even like a Christmas or something like that or Valentine's Day. But yeah, Valentine's Day it it's it shouldn't even be. It people I don't think people should try, go to the ends of the world for it every year, especially when you're in a long term committed relationship already. Yeah, you shouldn't wait to that day to to go all out. You should just be a nice person <laughs> and treat your partner with respect and love every day. And then on Valentine's Day, maybe you just do something like a tick extra. But I feel like the people that wait until Valentine's Day to go all out suffer for the other 364 days because they're exactly you know because they're not like as attentive as maybe the other partner would like. So. Stupid holiday. It is so dumb. I'm willing to put the holiday where you go out and go door to door and try to get candy from strangers while dressed up as characters that aren't real more believable than this oh, yeah, I'm all stupid for ass holiday. So it was weird because you know how out of tune I am with because I have because I'm so lonely. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> do you know how out of tune I am with, with the whole Valentine's Day? On a couple of days ago, my coworker was asking me she was like hey what do i get my my boyfriend for valentine's day and i sat there genuinely perplexed saying what do you mean what do you get him for valentine's day she was like well you know it's valentine's day you know you have to get him something i said you have to get your significant other something for valentine's day and she was like dude yeah that's usually what what happens and so i was thinking in my mind i was like fuck you know back in the day when you know, you know, I I used to be in relationships. I I did I did do stuff for Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. but I'm so far removed from it. It just sounded so stupid at the time, <laughs> and I was like, why why what do you need to get him something for? You yeah. know what I mean, go take him to dinner, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like a nice dinner. I'll I'll go to like a a nicer restaurant. You know, rack up a bill, pay for it. Then yeah, that's a good present. Like a you know, uh, there's varying levels to this. You know based on the the different people that you talk to throughout your life. Some people like the flowers and the chocolate. Some people don't like the flowers and the chocolate. Some people like material gifts. Other people don't like material gifts. It really just depends on your partner's uh, preferences. But at the end of the day, it, it's basically a day where you're like, all right, let's do something for each other until tomorrow when we do something for each other again. Like, again like, exactly. Like it doesn't make sense to me. Do you know what your love language is? Kung-Lun? Yes, I think I can't remember the names. But. Right, right. right. Ne- neither can I, because I. Well, obviously there's like, there's like five or something. Yeah, there's like five of them. I think um, I think words, words like, of affirmation. Uh, I That's don't know if it's words or affirm. It's just like uh, communication is huge. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that falls under words. Um, uh, okay, okay. I think that one is like like physical touch or something like that. Yeah, it, that's not necessarily uh, like the top one because nobody's no. <laughs> I rely on myself well, for well, touch. Well, like a, a lot of your ideas of relationships come from your parents, like your how you view mm. your environment. True, you know? true, true. And so with my parents, it's like communication. Um, I forgot what else is there. I mean, touch is nice in terms of like sex. Yeah. Uh, that's my favorite. I like that. Um, I mean, like, sure, touch is nice every once in a while, but I, I don't like, I need you to touch my arm or else, like, you know or what I'm saying? Like, I don't like, have like we always have to be connected. Yeah, or, but communication is fucking huge for me. Um, what else is there? It's like... There, uh, there's a there's a, there's touch. There's communication. There is if uh, material goods. No, not, no, I don't care about that shit. Mm, I do. <laughs> okay, what I, else? I like, I like fun stuff. 
uh, I, I, forgot, I forgot the other two, but I, I think the the ones that I actually do know about are the ones that I think I care about the most is uh, <laughs> <laughs> material goods. But no, I mean, I mean, material goods are material goods are dope, but it's 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 the material goods and I, I guess I don't know if this falls into it, but like the like gestures. Mm. efforts of gestures or yeah right? i think that's one of them yeah i like that one too you know like they're like just to see that they're trying but you know uh, we'll i'll let you know what which ones that kong san and i actually adhere to when we actually get into another relationship when we finally convince a female to say <laughs> i will date you yeah exactly it, it, it's 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 hard out there in those streets but uh but or, in, in order you in, even get to talk to us <laughs> It's hard in these streets for these women to talk to us. Oh man! I mean, I, I just I can't say anything. I, I don't I don't put myself out there as much. Uh, but you know what? I I I should be because I think it's time, Kong San. I think it's time that I start operating outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Okay. And being able to uh, because whenever whenever I'm, I'm met with a situation where it's man, I don't want to do this or. You know, I I could just stay home and be lazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I recall in my mind the number of years, countless hours that I have done nothing Mm -hmm. by myself at home, just playing video games or, you know, going ham or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that that usually what jogs in my mind when I say, yeah, let's go to this event because I should probably doing be doing something outside of my comfort zone. Okay, and you know, I, I played golf yesterday. You know, shout out to Skylands Golf Course. Y'all are still mad expensive, but I played golf yesterday, and and one of my one of my buddies flaked on me. You know, I don't want to I don't want to out him on this podcast, but you know, he flaked on me, and so I was a solo, uh, and I, I I pulled up to the to the golf course, and I was like, you know what, I'm not feeling it right now, dog. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a little tired. You know, I, like I didn't even drink the, uh, the previous night. Like I'm I'm just I'm just tired right now. I can easily just get back into my car and just. You know, cancel the tea time and go off. But, yes. <clears throat> you know, I got a bucket of balls. Went to go hit balls. I seen like some dudes who was, I think, playing in the group behind me. Like these young dudes, they they look kind of cool. And I didn't even know who I was playing with yet. I pulled up to the first tee. I ended up playing with these two uh, middle aged. I'll say because I want to be nice. Middle aged white dudes, but they're pretty old. They're probably like in their fifties or maybe early sixties. And we ended up just getting drunk by like the third or fourth hole and it was probably like one of the coolest rounds of golf that i've had in a very long time you know what i mean and it all took was my me mentally inside my head to say look if you just put your golf bag back in your car you drive home what are you gonna do you're gonna sit down stare at your computer try to do some work or whatever but you do this all the time how about you not do that and just do something for once opposite of what you're thinking and i didn't end up and it ended up paying off yeah so i mean if if things obviously i have no control over this i only have control over myself but if things that or events or whatever that i choose to embark on going against the grain of what my myself mentally is is telling myself if all those ended up in, in a good situation then obviously then i would do it but it's a numbers game right sometimes it doesn't come to fruition yes okay but yeah i i not, I know it's a little bit past the new year, but maybe operating outside of my comfort zone is one of the things. However, I have been pretty good about not drinking soda in 2019, Kong-san. Ooh, that's pretty good. I have not drinking a drink a drop of soda in 2019. But what are you drinking right now? I'm drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking tequila, but not with Sprite. I'm drinking it with lemonade. Dude. Okay. There you go. And I think I'm going to add that on there. Whenever I am feeling like I, I don't want to do something, get into my mind, think outside of my brain. And then get into my brain and say, "No, fuck you, just do it," because you're gonna be a loser going home anyway. Yeah, you know. I, th- I think I think I operate best best off of like negative reinforcement. Hmm. I know a lot of Not people me. know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I think honestly, the thing that gets me the most, I just ask myself, or I just tell myself, whenever like whatever mood I feel, you you just have to like for me, I have to just recognize the world is gonna keep moving with or without me. So if I hesitate, the longer it takes for me to make a decision, the more the I'm behind. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, 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 yeah. If it was like a linear like path where everyone's just walk taking steps forward, if I pause to think about something, 
people are just going to keep walking past me. And that gets me to just be like, fuck it, just make a decision and Live with we'll it. just see what happens. Mm. So then that's why I'm sometimes I'm very like, I'll just be like, fuck it, let's just get rid of a quarter of my shit. Like I'm just, you know, like those things, yeah. that's what helps me get to be like, fuck it. Because material things, they come and go, M- money can come and go, like that kind of stuff. It's nice to have. It's important to always like think about it and consider it. But at the end of the day, what's the use of like stressing over all that stuff if you're not really like trying shit out? You know, that's all about right. life. I think the saying is a lot of people, what is it? A lot of people are alive, but they're not living or something like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just that's me right now. Yeah. It's just like now you've done something you haven't ever done before and it worked out okay so the next time you're more likely to be like hmm i'll try it right and then every once in a while you can be like that didn't work but you're gonna realize like even when you when it doesn't work you're like how much harm did it really do me yeah right, right and right, it right. just gets easier and easier and easier <clears throat> to the point where you're just like sure fuck it whatever I'll, I'll go golf with these people or whatever and yeah you always you're i think it's human nature to always have the feeling of like butterflies in your stomach where you're like, ah, oh, I'm nervous. I, I've never experienced this before. Right. But as long as you're just like, ah, oh, just fight it and just keep going. It's almost like when you want to drink more and your body's telling you no, and yeah, you're yeah. just like, all right, listen, dude, you're going to just suck it up. And you're gonna take <laughs> Don't this be a sh- bitch. Let's do this. You're going to take a shot like a champ. It's that <laughs> feeling, but applying it to social situations. You're mm-hmm. just like, listen, you're not going to want to do this, but just do it anyway. Kind of thing. I, I like nerves. Uh, I like I mean, the feeling of nerves is not it's not ideal, especially when you're trying to do something that involves like motor functions and all that stuff. Yeah. Or involves the physicality side of your life. But I like nerves and being nervous because I tell myself, hey, man, if you're nervous, then that means you care about it. Yeah, there right? you go. Because yeah. you're, you're afraid to fuck it up. And although fear shouldn't be in your mind anyway, but at least when I think about it, like, wow, you're mad nervous right now. But I'll try to break it down and say, hey, at least you care about it. Yeah. And that that, that helps me out a little bit. Um, but I, I really want really quick. I wanted to talk about because Kong San mentioned this, and he does have this because I've seen it. And obviously, you guys can't. Aside from the boxes, Kong San has these garbage bags full of clothes. Yes. Okay. And we alluded to a little bit of a uh, of Marie Marie Kondo Marie Kondo. Yeah. Marie Marie Kondo Marie Kondo. <laughs> Marie Kondo, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, uh, it could be Spanish for all I know. You know. But I think she's like Japanese, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where uh, I hear, I haven't watched it, but I always hear of uh, sparking. Uh, I said spark your interest earlier in the podcast, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. she because I got that from spark, fe- uh, not not fear, spark joy. joy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, there you go. Thank there you. Go. I haven't watched it yet. Okay, sorry. Spark joy. Yeah. So let me ask you this because I'm pretty sure you've. That you are the perfect person to ask is because you are trying to get rid of a bunch of your shit. Yes, and because because you are moving, what is? Because I, I'm I'm still because I need to get rid of a bunch of shit also. Yes. Okay. So what is if you can if you can put it into words, quantify it somehow verbally, what the feeling of a joy that's being sparked for you to keep something, or if it doesn't do that, what do you not feel, and you just need to throw it away? Uh. I know I have to get rid of something if I just feel apathy. I'm like, I've literally never touched this. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't know it. I still had it. Is it raining outside? I think that's the wind. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's the wind. You know, it, it's just like you just hold this piece of, you just hold this item and you're just like, fuck it, whatever. Like, what value does this bring? If what, I get, what if you're going to use it in the future though? That Okay, so that my question, I asked myself a couple of questions. I asked myself, when was the last time I used this? Okay. If I can remember the last time I used it, was it because I wanted to use it or was it because I know other choice? Uh, okay. And how, how is this going to be useful for me in the future? Okay. And is it really going to be that impactful that I need to keep it? Okay. Those are some pretty good questions then. I, I guess with clothes, it's it's, it's easier because they're, they're clothes, right? Yeah. So the clothes that I, I've kept are the ones where I'm like, I use this a lot. It, I like it. I like the color or the way it looks on me or whatever. Yeah. When it comes to items, it's like I use this frequently. I'll use it again and again and again. Um, things I get rid of is I've never used it. I haven't used it in a long time. Um, I've used it before but didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. 
everything has to be a net positive. If it's neutral or worse, I get rid of it. Because I've thought about doing the same. Well, because I've, I've done the same thing where I just kind of I have a pile at home somewhere, literally on my balcony. That's load. It's a bag loaded, just full of shit. Like yeah. there's there's a fucking iHome in there kind of thing, right? Where you plug it in, whatever, it plays music. But the last time I used it was years ago. I've never used it again. But it's weird. Uh, some there are times where my remorse outweighs the joy that was never there. Right? It's almost as if like maybe it's a Filipino thing or how I've been brought up. Like make sure you use it to its full extent. Make sure it's worth no, it. No, I mean my parents say the same thing. Mm. You know, they get mad when I'm like, they're like, why do you get rid of so much shit all the time? And it's like, I don't know. Once you're done with it, you're done with it. You just know. If yeah. you, I think the remorse is, if you say that the remorse is because I didn't use it versus the remorse being like, I made a bad purchase. If the remorse okay. is, damn, okay. I bought it thinking I was going to do this, but it's not that, then that's not remorse. You just, that's how we do everything in life. You get, something at a restaurant because you think it tastes good if it doesn't taste good then well you know not to get it next time right right it's not one of those things like now you know so don't get it again kind of thing okay so i don't have a remorse where i'm like fuck i shouldn't have bought it i mean i have it where i'm like this was a stupid ass purchase but right, right. that's not the barrier of like keep it because you you want to make it justify it it's like no i make bad purchases all the fucking time yeah same <laughs> <laughs> Same. And you know what? It gets at a point, too, where it's like you think that you can flip it for, for something. Right. But it just, there's just so much effort. And I and I give mad kudos to people who actually do this for a living. And yeah. they do make a living off of it. Buying and selling stuff on eBay, going to the swap meets, going to the yard sales, picking stuff up for pennies on the dollar. I think that might, I don't I don't even know what that means, but I feel like that's, that's what it is. And then reselling it for, you know, well, it could be like a markup of like two hundred percent, but it's from a dollar to three dollars. You know what I mean? Whereas you still have to go through the shipping and and all that stuff. I, I feel like in order to actually get something out of it, although I have some dope shit, it's, I, I probably drive myself into the grave just trying to like print out all this bullshit and just sending it off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of people are deterred from the effort it takes to kind of do whatever work, whatever it is that they want to work on in their life, but. You know, the reality of it is that's that's life. It's very the difference is you don't want to do it versus you want to do it, then you're willing to put up with that shit. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. the difference. It's the same shit. There's no one thing that's like more or less than the other. Everything you do in life is gonna take effort. It's just a matter of whether or not you wanna do it. And then the difference between people that do it and don't is just they get over that hump, that initial hump of like, fuck, I don't wanna do it. It's like sure. There's millions of things in life people don't want to do, but eventually you're going to have to do certain things that you don't want to do in life. It's just, that's how it is. Nothing is 100%. Nothing is also 0%. So Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a Marie Kondo. I got a Marie Kondo in my place. Yeah. yeah I, got a, I got a Marie Kondo in my place. I mean, you can even do like a little bit at a time. It's just like, just start with like, get rid of like five things. To be honest, Gonzalo, I have so many fucking clothes, dude. Yeah, listen, honestly, if you take the clothes you haven't worn in years and you got rid of it yeah. and you feel bad about it, ask yourself the same thing in like two months and you're going to realize you didn't miss it at all. Right, right. I have a lot of clothes that I think are, I used for like motivational purposes. Mm, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy that or keep that because you're going to fit into it one day. Yeah. Like you fit into it back in high school or back in college. And you know what? But if it didn't work, then it's, you know. What's the chances of it actually working? Maybe there's a different motivation method that you can. True. That so I got, I got, I got to throw away all my shirts. Then I, not, 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 not because I have tags on them still. Because I've, I've tried them on, and you know, it's, it's very, it's very not, mo it's very disheartening when you look at the Michelin Man, <laughs> and 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 you look in the mirror, and it's like, oh man. Okay, you know, Pillsbury Doughboy uh, came 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 to real life, but yeah, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. That's on. You know Dude, what? It's just baby steps. I think so many people are trying to do a 180 of their life instantly. Correct. That's what makes it so hard. You have to find a way to seamlessly integrate it in your life. When I was fat, when I was really, really, really fat, and I was trying to lose weight, I started with just no soda, like you did. Mm, Once you get used to no soda, then you move on to the next day. Let's say you do no soda, then you do no juice. Then after no juice, you try one salad a day. 
Then one salad a yeah, day yeah, turns yeah. into two salads a day. Then two salads a day turns into uh, run around the block. Then run around the block. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, yeah. That process of losing weight and everything, getting in shape, when it happened for me, took over two years. And it was just an incremental buildup to now it's just a part of life. I think so many people are like, I need to do these 10 things. And I'm going to start tomorrow. And I'm going to do it all. And that's how you fail. And that's how you even fall further backwards. Correct, correct. Just focus on one thing at a time. It's like the Will Smith story. You put one brick down at a time. You don't worry about the Ooh. idea that you have to build a wall. It's very much what I do when I'm a cripple and I have to go up steps. If I look up and see how many steps I have to climb, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do it. And I start sweating. <laughs> but if I focus getting on one step at a time, before you know it, I'm already at the top. Well, I mean, you have to you have to get back into your home anyway. I also know? have no choice. Exactly. You have to, you have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah, I'll 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 reassess. I'll reassess that. Yeah, man. I, I actually we at work we embarked on this. It was company wide. If whoever wanted to join into it, yeah. But it's uh like this this fitness kind of thing. It's a two month. How much weight and it's it's either body fat percentage or weight or or both. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I said that I would win this just because I can put my body through hell and do a crash course and drop 30 pounds or 40 pounds or whatever um, just to win the competition. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pack back on like another 60 pounds kind of thing. Yeah. People are searching for long-term answers with short-term resolutions. Oh, that's, that's the, that's my takeaway from a lot of things. I think there's a lot of people that I've talked to that don't like to exercise, but they want to lose weight. So they resort to other methods and I, it's like, I don't know if I want to tell them that it is that's short term thinking, like eventually you will have to get to a point where you're going to exercise. And instead of waiting to get to that point, if you started exercising a little bit every day, yeah. when, when your body is, is changing, it's going to change not only faster, but it'll be easier once you get to that plateau and you, you need to take your activity level to another, another step up. It's easier to do than you know than not doing it like if i didn't exercise and then i tore my achilles then to try to get into shape that way is way difficult right right right. but i was trying to stay as fit as and active as possible i tore my achilles you know wednesday i'll have a boot on and so i can go to the gym again now it's like okay i know what i need to do i mm-hmm. know what i got to work on and it becomes easier life is about uh working really really hard so you can maintain right it's all about maintenance. People try to do the highs and lows, but you got to try to stay as close to equilibrium as possible. People don't like it because it's not fun. It's not like flashy. It's not exciting. But that equilibrium to me is the key to success. It's the key to life. Note, note to self, young, young, young children and yes. old people. Okay, Kang San is is a very fit individual. He works out way more than I do, but I don't have a torn Achilles. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so you know what? Which which one's better, really? Who's who are who's we to, to say? Who's to say which life is better? A torn Achilles or not a torn? Achilles? It depends on how you look at it. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm dying inside. Okay, I'm slowly dying inside. Uh, but yeah, okay. So new beginnings. Let's um, you know, let's 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 move forward with positivity. Always, we, we always we always want to to instill positive vibes in, in, into everybody. Um, but I I think we have. Uh, uh, a few things to to discuss to, to close this out. Yeah, let's do. Let's run through some fun current events. Um, mm. We'll get a couple minutes each event, and then we'll close it out. Word. Okay. So uh, the first article we want to do is uh, an event that's going to happen starting tomorrow. Oh. It is um, the 2019 Westminster Dog Show. <laughs> One of the most exciting. Uh, episodes, one of the most exciting, uh, oh man, things. If you're a big dog lover, this is an amazing, this amazing is the show. Super Bowl. So it'll air on Fox Sports One from 7 30 to 11 on Monday p.m. Okay, and Tuesday. And you have like best in show, you have all various uh categories. Oh my God. And the Westminster Dog Show is an amazing, amazing competition. Because I love dogs. It's you know what? It's okay. It's the my father and I, we don't agree on a lot of things. Okay. He's he's brought me up based off of how 
an individual with good moral principle and all that stuff should live their lives. And, and I feel like that's why I, I would, I like to operate that way. You know, yeah. my small group of friends, you know, I, I treat them like my family or whatever, all that bullshit. Right. And we don't agree on a lot of things. We always butt heads all the time. Yes. However, there are only a few times one being or when we're watching golf, mm-hmm. the second and maybe only other time where we can just actually sit and I could feel that we're thinking in unison is when a dog show is happening. And obviously, well, maybe not obviously uh, for, for the listeners out, out you know, out, out there and, and, and our, our viewers, which we're, we're obviously very grateful for. I do have some canines at, at my house. You know, I actually currently have three right now, one of which I don't really want, but it's, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. We, we have to take care of her. And yeah, yeah, man, we, we love dogs. Okay, yeah. uh, GTWT with good times with the boys is pro dog one hundred. Every single member, um, except for one, but maybe it's because of you know different living situations. Every single member of Good Times with the Boys almost owns a, a dog and and separate breeds, and separate breeds yeah. exactly. Not just one cookie cutter type of breed. Not saying that cookie cutter breeds are are bad. Like what a lot of people have, whatever terriers or poodles and all that stuff, or pit bulls, and you know that's not bad, but. The Westminster Kennel kind of Club show, uh, I know they, they have a big one in New York also. My TVs, uh, although this week also is a pretty big uh, pretty big golf week, uh, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be watching golf this week as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I'm actually going to be out at Riviera. You know, shout out to Riviera, everyone. If you're listening to this, my golf homies who are listening to this, I'll be out there on Wednesday. Um, although that's going on, best believe the Westminster Kennel kind of Club is going to be on the background as well. Boom. I, I, I love it. I, I love everything about it. The dogs look so happy. I wish to one day come. Can I tell you what? I think one day I'm gonna when I you know when we do make it big, we're gonna be friends with with many types of people. Some of those people probably being like these breeders and owners of these animals. Right, right. And I will be one of those people who is like trottling along with those dogs, you know, showing them up and down the yeah. the little thing. And that's actually actually one of my dreams. That is actually one of my dreams. Dream big, guys. Dream big. Uh, we're gonna stay on the animal theme here. Yes. Um, this one is, uh, while we are very pro-dog, we are very anti-zoo. That is 100%. So two rare tigers at the London Zoo oh, were no, paired together to mate in an effort to protect their species. But the male killed the female. Oh, my God. Come on. Listen, you, you cannot force nature. You can't force nature. You cannot force two predatory animals together and be like you guys are gonna fuck right it doesn't it doesn't work like that wow dude so basically they they took the two tigers two uh they say sumatran 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 tigers Mm -hmm. sounds rare as fuck and they introduce each other and naturally as predators they're going to be cautious of each other at first yeah and then the male pounce on the female killer (laughs) listen (laughs) It is. I could have told you that was a bad idea from the very beginning. Yeah. It sounds. It actually kind of sounds kind of funny, but it's very obviously very sad. How do you? But it's kind of funny though. I mean, like, who thinks that that would be a good idea? Let's take two killing machines and put them together, and hopefully they mate. Doesn't there's, there's, there's no hopefully they mate. <laughs> well, well, maybe you would think that the 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 male if if the male tiger was anything like me, sexually frustrated, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he would obviously pounce on the female tiger in in efforts to mate with her. Yeah, but it's not like I need to fuck anything. It's right, 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 right. The female and the male, they have to. Ha- you have to the pheromones or whatever fuck it is. Like there has to be all these like chemistry things happening. Correct. You can't take two things that kill things for a living, and then hopefully that hopefully that there's peace. Usually. The male has to combat another male. Then they say, I'm the dominant one. Then the females go, okay, let's correct, fuck. Correct. And that has to happen. There's a process. You cannot shortcut nature. I don't get it. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I mean, I was thinking maybe they could artificially inseminate, but I'm pretty sure PETA and all them are, are going to be. What did well, you not? PETA, even this would be. Well, this is even fucking, probably fucking, fucking worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you really, if you really, especially if you're doing it off the basis of expanding the the population for it i'm pretty sure if you artificially yeah maybe the 
Tiger might freak out like, oh, my God, why am I fat all, all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, why am I so thirsty and hungry all of a sudden? Oh, my God, why am I shitting out tiger babies? You know what I mean? M- maybe at least that scientifically would have happened. But I'm pretty sure they did not foresee this happening. Yeah. I think, okay, like scientifically speaking, you know, I think being species, whatever, knows when it they need a mate. But that's yeah. in a natural setting, not an artificial setting. And at the same time, when a species is about to go extinct and they know it, they will do their best they can to reproduce. But when you're in a zoo, when you're not at home, how you're not aware of your surroundings and you know it's not real, mm-hmm. there's I think all that kind of stuff gets kicked out of whack. Correct. So the line the tiger probably saw the female tiger and was like, All right, what are you doing at my home? Yeah. And she's like, What are you doing here? And he's like, oh, we're going to fuck you up. So sad. So so sad. Don't go to the zoo. Yeah, fuck the zoo. Don't force nature. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Unless it's our our future petting zoo, which um, they're all going to be rescue animals and they'll eventually be let back out. And they're not fucking killing machines. And they're not killing machines. And, you know, we won't have anything endangered. Okay. So uh, this this last piece here and then we'll go. Um, This is actually more lighthearted. In in the, at the zoo at Belfast, okay, there were a, a recent uh, storm. So kind of, you know, whenever there's a storm, there's a lot of branches, oh, twigs, and stuff. So no, it's a good ending. Oh, okay. so there's a lot of branches and twigs and stuff that like fall to the ground, leaves. Mm-hmm. So uh, chimps used a multitude of branches to create a ladder to escape Get from the their fuck enclosure. Out of here, and. They were caught on video just walking around the zoo. Get the fuck out. That's so cool. <laughs> that is, man. The Kongsan, let me ask you this. This okay? is why zoos are bad. Uh, the zoos are bad. So, evolution, right? Yes. I think we've discussed this before, but it still ponders and it still runs in my mind. But mm-hmm. if we did come from chips, chimps, mm-hmm. and you know, people do believe in evolution, I, I do believe in evolving, but shouldn't there be people, and again, we're not scientists, okay? We Correct. went to a science school, but we're not scientists. We're trying our best here. Shouldn't there be people in the process of becoming humans that are chimps? Maybe they died off, or maybe that's Bigfoot. I don't know. Maybe, okay, but there should be a lot. I feel like I sound like a dumbass right now because because you have chimps who obviously look like chimps, and then you have humans that look like us that are got, humans. I think it's just like they got weighted out, or they all evolved into humans already. Like, I think maybe if you're 80% there, it just kicks you over. <laughs> and then, I don't know who works like that. <laughs> and, then, and then if you're if you're not there, then there's just like fall Fuck back. It, you're dead, yeah. Fall back, son. Yeah, go fall back, back, go back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad. The, the motherfuckers are smart, dude. Yeah, don't, don't. Zoos are just, just such a dumb idea. Yeah, don't, don't go to zoos. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's 60 episodes down. Thank you, Kong Sun. What a run. I, I I appreciate you. 60 episodes in less than a year. That's more than one a week. That's pretty good. Did we not try to say that? Say yeah. that we wanted to do that? That's pretty good. I wanted to get to 69 episodes, but... You know, oh, that's right. Sorry. 69 you know, was the number. You, you shoot for the... You reach for the stars, so if you fall, you land on a cloud. Land on the cloud. Land on the moon is what we did. Yeah, something like that. Mm. All right. So on behalf of German, Andrew, Max, Richard, and myself... Thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking around. Whether you listen to all 60 episodes or just this one, we appreciate you for even listening, tuning in. Um, Check us out on social media at underscore GTWTB on Instagram and Twitter. Any questions, concerns, comments, email Andrew at GTWTB.com. YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts is where you can find us along with wherever else you get your podcasts. And uh, as we're moving... You know, we're probably going to take a little hiatus from this. We got to sort of, as this part of my life evolves, we're going to look to find ways to also evolve the podcast. So be on the lookout for that. Um, We'll see. We'll see what the outcome of all that is. So there's going to be a little bit of a break. Uh, If you haven't listened to all 60 episodes, feel free to check back and listen to some things in the past. There's a lot of various topics from Kanye West to... Uh, zombie apocalypse to sports movie reviews gambling sports politics current events um 
And no matter what, I promise you will always be entertained. So uh, on behalf of the Good Times with the Boys crew, thank you for listening. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.